In section 1.3, we want to learn how to take a simple random sample. We also want to learn what that is. So a random sample is when you use chance to select individuals from a population to be included in the sample. Now that's key. You have to have chance or randomness involved. Right? There has to be random chance, which will dictate who is in the sample rather than just convenience, rather than just who happens to be there. Because if you choose convenience, then everything that you build off of that is statistically meaningless. So for example, um, if I was thinking about um, those shows where you watch people dance or you watch people sing and then you call in for your favorite, it's a survey, but it's meaningless because it's only convenience survey. It's a survey of the people that care and the people that are watching, the people that are willing to you know, spend the money to call in or text in, that kind of thing. So the results are statistically meaningless. That said, it can still decide the winner on, you know, American Idol or something like that, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's worthwhile statistically speaking. Now, simple random sampling is the procedure um, for which each possible sample of given size little n, that's your sample size, is taken from a population of size capital N, is equally likely to be obtained, right? So every possible sample is equally likely. The list of all the individuals in uh, in the population is called the frame. So it's another way of saying list. It's like a fancy name of saying it. Now, a random sample avoids bias. That's the reason you do randomness. So you want that random chance because the random chance helps avoid bias. Maybe not entirely, but it tries. Right? Um, there are many other ways to take random unbiased samples. So the simple random sample is like a building block that we use and with other um, ways of taking sampling, which we'll learn in section 1.4. So section 1.3 is just this basic, basic building block of how to take a random sample. Now one more comment. There is such a thing as sampling with replacement and sampling without replacement. So sampling with replacement means that, oh, sorry, without replacement, I'll do that one first. Sampling without replacement means that you're removed from the list. Once you're chosen, you cannot be chosen again. So you're removed from the list. Think about dealing a deck of cards, right? Once the ace of spades has been dealt, it can no longer go back, right? Sampling with replacement means you're playing with a magician and they say, you know, pick a card, any card, and then you place it back into the deck. And so it's placed back into the population and so that you could be chosen a second time. All right. So a statistics instructor wants to obtain a simple random sample of three students um, from her class of 27 students. She assigns each student a number from 1 to 27 on her roll, right? Her roll would be the frame, right? That, that roll of students, that class list, right? Lists students alphabetically by last name. She claims that each of the following is a simple random sample. Is she right? And the answer is, of course not. <laughs> of course she's wrong, and we will see why she's wrong. Now, to be fair, some of these will be, but let's see here. The student, or excuse me, the instructor asks a student in the class to randomly choose three numbers from 1 to 27. The student chooses the numbers 15, 18, and 21. The student with those numbers assigned represent the sample of three from this class. Oh, that is not, no, that is not a simple random sample. Nope. People tend to pick in patterns, first of all. And second of all, the student probably knows where their name is and the names of their friends and might be choosing their friends or choosing their enemies or whomever, right? That is not random, right? Once you ask people to do it off the top of their head, it's never random. People are not good at choosing random numbers. So I can make a note. People do not choose randomly. Um, as a matter of fact, when people try to choose randomly, they um, always mess it up. And I've had um, statistics instructors tell me that they've had people try to choose random numbers and they prove to them, you know, look at the patterns you built, you know, you build patterns and it's not random. Or look at the patterns that are lacking because randomness actually has patterns to it and um, namely streaks. And they never have that when you're choosing it by yourself. All right, a, ran a computer randomly chooses three numbers from 1 to 27 and reports 8, 11, 19. The students with those numbers, all right, so that's yes, right? That is using a computer program to do random number generation. Now, technically, computer programs have issues with randomness, but we're going to assume that this is a random number generator program, and we'll just let it go. Um, don't come at me, any of you computer science people, because I know there can be issues with that, but let's just let it go for now. 
Now the teacher has two 10 sided dice. She will roll them as many times as it takes to generate numbers between one and 27. In this way, she obtains the samples 26, 27, and 14. Now it just so happens that I happen to have two 10 sided dice. This is a 10 sided die that um, gives the 10, 20, 30, 40, and this gives single numbers between one, well, zero and nine. So when you roll them, I rolled 42, right? And so there we go, 22, right? That's in my class list because it's from zero to 27, see? So the person's rolling the dice, throwing out any that are not valid. Oops, there was 27. I rolled a 27. So that's yes, right? Dice are random. Dice have chance in them. And they're not weighted dice. I mean, as long as they're fair dice, which we assume they are, we'll just say that, assume dice were fair. And all the sides are equally likely. I've never seen a loaded 10-sided die. I've seen loaded six-siders. Those are all over the place. But I've never seen a weighted or loaded um, or biased I rolled 26, 10-sided um, die. I've never seen that, but I'm sure they exist. The teacher puts the numbers on slips of paper torn from a sheet of paper, right? So everybody writes their names and they tear them off. Then three slips are chosen. All right, that tearing part, that's concern. So that's a no. It's because the pieces of paper are not uniform. as opposed to when she puts them on three by five index cards. Uh-oh, this is still a no. If you're gonna put them on three by five, either leave them open or fold them all the same. But folding lengthwise and widthwise, that's a little bit problematic. I would say we have problems with that because for whatever reason, psychologically, people are more likely to reach for one than another. I don't know which one, but I would say no. They should be all the same. All right, now let's take the time to actually go find a simple random sample. So we have here, um, CNN published this list in 2002 of the 50 greatest cartoon characters, which I adore. It's obviously a population unto itself. And we are going to, and they were ranking them. They say, you know, this is the first one. They say Bugs Bunny is the best and Homer Simpson's the second best. Rocky and Bullwinkle, which is really two of them, but I'll let it go, is third and so on. I don't necessarily agree with their list, but I find it fun. All right, so what variable is rank? Hmm, first, second, third, fourth, fifth. You can tell that, you know, number 24 is less than number 23, but you can't do any meaningful calculations from it. So we would say, oh, this is a typo. <laughs> this is qualitative here. Sorry about that. This should be qualitative. This should be quantitative. Sorry about that. And so the answer is that it's qualitative because we cannot do meaningful calculations. Calculations are not possible. And again, I apologize. I'll fix that typo for future. Now, how can we perform a convenient sample of this? Let's say of size 10. A convenient sample would just be like, this is convenient. So you could kind of pick, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20, pick a pattern. Or you could pick your, you know, there's a couple ways to do, actually there's many ways to do this. So you choose your, your 10 favorite characters. I am also fond of Bugs Bunny, I have to be honest. Um, I'm very fond of, of Donald Duck and Daffy Duck. I've got a thing for the ducks, apparently. So choose your 10 favorite characters or um, choose numbers in a pattern. That would be bad. All right, so let's use technology to take a sam random sample of 10 characters with replacement and without replacement. All right. Now I'm going to show you two ways. There is the stat crunch way and the calculator way. First, I'm going to show you in stat crunch. So in stat crunch, of course, we would sign in. 
using our MyMathLab or MyStatLab ID and um, password. I have actually uploaded this data set for the whole world to get a hold of. So it's available under data sets. If you type cartoon and press enter, you can find it, the 50 greatest cartoon characters. So there we have it. Or you could go type them, I suppose, but that would seem like a lot of waste. So here we have it in StatCrunch. I click, well, I don't click on it, but I go, let my mouse hover over data. I go down to sample and I click on sample. And then you can either actually choose the rank or the character. Um, it doesn't really make any difference, but I'll choose character. And then I want a sample size of 10, just one sample, that's fine. And for this particular one, I want a sample with replacement. So I'm gonna check that little box right there that lets me sample with replacement. And I don't want multiple columns. I don't want 10 separate columns for this. So I'm actually going to stack them right there. Stack with a sample ID, sure. That'll put them all into one column. It'll attach an ID, but, which I don't really care about, but that's fine. All right, and then you can use a dynamic seed, use a fixed seed. So dynamic seed means it's gonna um, randomly be different every time, a fixed seed. Um, seed is where it starts the randomization process. It's a computer term. So don't worry about it too much. It's fine, just leave it in a dynamic seed. So I'm gonna say compute. And there they are. There's my 10 characters right there. And you'll notice Daffy Duck is repeated, right? because I allowed for repetition. And when I did that, right, since it's with replacement, that means that some character can get chosen more than once. And apparently the fates were hearing me because I've got Daffy Duck twice and Donald Duck once, which all of which I love, because I love those characters. So for writing notes to ourselves about how to do this, we would go to in StatCrunch, you can load the data or type the data, right? And then choose, I think it was data, then sample. I'm almost positive, but let me double check really quick. Yep, it was data, then sample. Choose data and sample and fill out accordingly. Right there. And then we could write the list and so on. Right. The little list is not that important right now, but when you're writing it for your homework assignment or whatever, I could say, you know, Daffy Duck, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. That would give me my list. All right. Now, what about the calculator? If you prefer the calculator, and I'm going to change this view so I can make it a little bit larger so you can see the screen a bit better. So you would go to math. See the probability over there? So you want to kind of hit the left arrow or the right arrow one way or another. And you want to go to rand int, random integer is what that stands for. So I'm going to choose number five, random integer. And I'll say the lower was number one, the upper was number 50. So it's going to do the numbers here. And I want a sample of size 10. So then I go to paste, enter, and there we have it. Now this particular one doesn't have any repetition, but repetition is possible. Nope, yeah, no repetition. So if I pressed enter again, let's see. Doo -doo -doo. Yep, the ones repeat there, see? See the ones re repeated because this one was with replacement. So let's go back to the notes and say what we typed. So in the TI-84, you know, choose whichever one of these you want. You go to math, that's the button then PRB, PROB, or PRB, depending on the age of your calculator. So you gotta move over there to probability. And then you choose number five, which was rand int. In our case, we typed one comma 50, and it gave us some results. Now that was with replacement. Without replacement is also really easy in StatCrunch. It's the same thing. So I can say the same thing that I set up above. So let me do it with the, the ranks this time because that would be easier to write. So let me go to data. So I just let my mouse hover over it. I'm not clicking on anything. Down to sample. I'm going to sample the rank right there. And I'm going to take a sample size of 10. 
and I'm going to leave sampling with replacement empty because I don't want to sample with replacement. I'm going to stack my results in that sample ID and then I'll click compute. And there they are. There's no repetition. So it's the same instructions as before. With a calculator, it depends. A newer calculator like this one, when I go into the math probability menu, there's a number eight that's rand int no repeat. So I would say one, I would say 50, I would say 10, everything would be great. The problem is that older TI-84s and TI-83s do not have that feature. So older TI-84s and 83s don't have rand int no repeat. So what they can do instead is actually go to math probability rand int and just choose more of them. <laughs> so say one, say 50, you know you want a sample size of 10, you're only going to have a couple repeats, so maybe go 13 and paste. And if there's any repeats, you just take one of them, right? So that's how you do it. You take the first 10 that don't repeat, if that makes sense. So that's the way to do it on an older TI-84, because not all TI-84s have that random no repeat feature. All right, so let's make a note right here in our, in our notes about how to do this. So stat crunch is the same as above. But for this one, we chose with replacement. Select, I guess I should say. Select with replacement in that big window. There was an option there, right, to select with replacement. It was a little box. Whereas stat crunch down here is the same as above, it's just so you do not select with replacement. On the TI-84, you have two options. So TI-84, the new ones, you choose number eight, which is rand int no rep, no repeat, one comma 50 comma 10, like that. Oh, technically up above, I was doing 10. I should have mentioned that. So it was one comma 50 comma 10. If you're on an older calculator, you'll just have to choose number five again, but just choose more, right? Get more than 10 so you can toss out any repetitions. So do 150 and then do, you know, 13 or something like that. More than n. So if you want a sample size of 10, choose more than that and you can throw away any repetitions that might occur. I didn't actually write down the sample because, of course, we can see that on the computer or on the, on the calculator. So the important thing is to know how to find it, and then you would write your sample down. Say for um, a worksheet or something like that. So you'd write that sample. 